So hi guys, we've got a new version of the Ed Tracker firmware to update and we've also got a new GUI now. Um, main features being we can now flash the device straight from the GUI, no more command line utility. Um, you can still use that if you want to, but the GUI will now be able to flash new versions of the software in for you. Also, the GUI's just been refreshed, it's got a lot of, uh, there's lots of kind of minor tweaks and fixes in both the, the device firmware and the sketch. But also we've now got, um, you can adjust the scaling on the axis, so you can adjust the sensitivity of, of the left, right and up, down um, axes, which a lot of people have asked for. So, um, for those of you who've already got a device, you know, this will be a straight update, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo this video basically for people starting from scratch, because obviously there might be people who are building their devices from afresh. So, if you've already got a device, it's already got the old firmware in, um, then probably some of the early bits you'll, you'll be kind of a au fait with but we'll, uh, we'll start from afresh. So obviously you've got your device, you've either built it yourself on breadboard, you've built it yourself out of one of our circuit boards or you've bought one uh, from us that's been pre-assembled. If you have bought one pre-assembled we will have uh, flashed um, the firmware in it and calibrated it for you. So you should really, just as a joystick, you should be able to just plug it in and it will work as a joystick. No need for even drivers. Um, however, um, I appreciate a lot of people find the un unrecognized device um, message in Windows annoying. So you can install the drivers if you want to, that's absolutely fine. They're the standard Arduino drivers. Um, the drivers are needed to uh, calibrate it and to flash um, new versions of the software in. So uh, if you've got a device that's already um, been built by us, you can play it as a joystick fine, but if you do need to recalibrate it at any point, you're going to need to do these steps anyway. So. You've got your device, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a kind of test device here that I've got off the headset. Now, when we're calibrating it, it does need to be held flat and still. I've obviously got this kind of um, pan of ice here to clamp it in, which is what I'm going to put it in. Um, now obviously you don't need one of these, you can put it flat on a, on a table, you can glue tack it down, sellotape it down, rest a book on it or, or whatever, but it does need, while you're calibrating it, it's very important that you hold it flat and still, uh, otherwise all your hard work will be wasted. Uh, so right, I've got, my, got that over there still, go over to the website, edtracker.org.uk, um, underneath the download section, you will find in the software category, you'll find two bunch of files that you'll need. The Arduino drivers, now you can get these off the Arduino website or we've just packaged them up here in a smaller zip just for convenience, but there's nothing special about those, they're just the standard Arduino drivers. Uh, download those and then unpack that zip file. When you plug the device in, in Windows, and it gets this unrecognized device, point it to the folder where you unpack those Arduino drivers and, and there you go, you'll now have a, an Arduino Leonardo recognized on your, uh, on your PC. So that's the first thing to do. Again, if you've got a device and you've already done all the flashing before, you've probably got that already on. The other thing then is the Ed Tracker 2 GUI version 2 32 bit dot zip. Um, you'll notice there's no 64 bit one. Um, basically, the 32 bitness is to do with Java, not your operating system. Um, and processing that this GUI is built out of had a bug in the 64 bit version of some libraries that caused it to be a bit flaky. So, what we've done We've just consolidated to the 32-bit Java version now. It was causing too many issues with people using the 64-bit one. The 32-bit one is nice and consistent and works all the time, so go with that. Uh, it does mean you'll need 32-bit Java installed on your PC. It doesn't matter if you've got 64-bit Windows, you can install both 64 and 32-bit Java side by side, um, but do put Java 7 32-bit JRE on uh, first hand. Download this um, EdTracker 2 GUI and unzip that to your desktop. Here we go, I've got the, uh, I've obviously previously done this, um, the zip file there, I've unpacked it uh, to this folder here, EdTracker 2 UI. Right then, we're ready to go. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm working with a completely blank device, uh, completely fresh, uh, nothing in it, um, which is a, an example for people who've obviously freshly built their, their EdTracker. Um, some of this won't apply if you've already got a previous version of the sketch in there. So run up the EdTracker util v2.exe that you'll find in that folder. And provided you've got Java installed, you'll get a 
set up like this. Now what this is doing is it's scanning on the left for an egg tracker device which it won't find because this is completely blank. Now our new UI. Uh, the main thing you'll spot up in the top left now is a sketch list drop down. And what you can do is you can highlight which version of the software you want to flash into your device from here. Um, this will obviously change over time but right now the latest one you can see there's version numbers in brackets. Uh, the first thing I need to do is put the calibration program in. Calibrate the uh, gyro accelerometer offsets. That's kind of a, a do once kind of activity really. Then we'll flash the main sketch, the main program in afterwards. Um, so you choose which one you want to flash in. Uh, I need the calib sketch first. So I'm going to choose 2.5.0 at the moment. Over time that might be different. Uh, so I've chosen that and then I click this flash button. And off we go. And you'll see here in this dialog some uh, text saying please wait flashing the device. It takes up to 60 seconds, normally it's a bit quicker than that. Uh, so we just watch that window, flashed and there we go. And now you should see it pole and connect to the device and now we've got a little head, we're all sorted. Now uh, future versions of this might allow you to hard choose the COM port that you're using. If you've got lots of serial ports or virtual serial ports on your PC, you might need to manually choose which one the air tracker's on. Um, but for me that, that kind of detected it fine. But if you have a problem where it's not detecting it, um, there's a new version that will come on the next iteration that will allow you to choose that COM port. So what we're doing here, well you can see the main point we're looking at here is these two dots in the crosshair section. And these are these represent your accelerometer, the green one, and your gyroscope, the orange one. And they need to be as close to the middle as possible and certainly within the inner circle. And you can see this blank device, the, uh, the green one is normally fairly close but the orange one will need um, calibrating. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this calculate bias values. Click it once, let it churn through some numbers and then those dots should converge somewhere towards the middle. Now if in one step it doesn't go far enough like this, that's fine, press it again. We want to get both dots inside the inner circle. So just keep repeating that calculate bias values until they're like so, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. So we're all happy with that now, we've got dots in the middle. I'm just going to close that UI and relaunch it. Now I'm going to choose the main sketch to flash in. So we want Ed Tracker 2 2.20. Now I'm going to choose that and I'm going to click flash. And again, wait for a short period of time. And there we go, it's flashed. It'll repoll for the device. And now you should see the screen updates look to Ed Tracker 2 version 2.20 monitoring. So it's now not monitoring a device in a calibration mode but in a main kind of virtual joystick mode and you can see all the options kind of change a little bit on the screen here. So what are we, what are we looking at here, what have we got? Um, we can check the operation of the head uh, correctly by moving the device and one thing you might want to do is click this rotate mounting axis to orientate how your device is going to sit on your head. At the moment you can see it's set at top USB right this means the device sitting on the top of your head with the USB cable coming out to the right. By clicking this you can change this to USB coming out the front or the left or the rear and then you can have it on the left side, right side, USB down and so forth. My preferred way of setting up is on the top with the USB cable coming out to the right so I'm going to choose this as the, uh, the mounting axis. And you can verify that that looks about right by just moving the device, tilting it up and down and verifying that the head moves in the right way. Okay, when we're happy with that, we're going to re leave our device nice and, uh, nice and still and we're going to reset the view and drift tracking. So the head is now pointing still and what we're doing is we're looking at this your drift value here. And what we want that to be is as close to zero as possible. Um, give or take 0.1 is acceptable, but 0 0.38 um, we can we can fine tune this and get this um, um, improved by monitoring the device over time and then allowing it to compensate for this drift. 
So what I'm going to do is, um, this I'm going to speed up because we're not going to sit here for 10-15 minutes, but normally you're going to leave the device running, just walk away from your PC, do not move the device now, leave it running for 15 minutes, come back and, um, and do what I'm about to do now. But what I'm going to do in the short term now is I'm just going to accept that minus 0.37 as the drift compensation. So I'm going to click this save drift compensation value here. So what we've done now is we've saved that drift compensation value. Uh, we can see the drift comp is now at minus 0.37 and the actual your drift is very low. It's minus, sorry, it's 0 0.01, 0 0.02. This is great, it's under kind of 0.1. Um, if you find that, that it's, your your drift is still quite high, then just, just leave it for another 10 minutes and click save drift compensation and just keep repeating that process for as many times as you need to until you get that your drift value here down to under 0.1 I would say. Um, there should be no reason why you can't get it down to this kind of uh, level. Um, and yeah, so that is now compensated for drift. The device should be a lot more stable over great periods of time. A few things you can do now, ultimately you're there. You, the, gap, the thing is ready to go now, you can press quit and use it in game. But a couple of other features we'll just show you. Um, you've got an option here to use a different kind of response mode so you can switch it between linear and exponential. Uh, linear is basically a very, as the name suggests, a very linear um, way of moving your head to relating that to in-game movement. So um, um, the other option, exponential, is very fine around the, the dead ahead perspective, uh, perspective, around the dead ahead position. Um, movement of head around dead ahead is very small but as you come off uh, the dead center and you you move your head further to the left the the um the output if you like the the amount that your head moves in game ramps up considerably uh, and that's both vertical and horizontal so try the two you can flip between one or the other um, and see which you prefer I prefer exponential I'm going to leave it on that you can now as well adjust in this new version version 2.2 at zero the scale by which um, that that motion is exaggerated. So you can adjust the scale here. A higher number means your in-game head will move more for less head movement, real head movement. So a bigger number, greater sensitivity. Lower number, you have to move your head more. Um, again, you can just set that to what you prefer. Uh, for me, in exponential mode, I find 16 is about right for me, but it's going to depend greatly on the size of your screen, how far away from the screen you are, so, you know, people need to be able to adjust that. Uh, and there we go. It's good to go. I can see that your drift is still zero. That's looking brilliant. Um, you can always relaunch this utility and recalibrate for drift at any time you want to. So, you know, if you find over time your device is becoming uh, dr drifting more, just, just redo this. Um, likewise, you can always put the calibration sketch back in, repeat that, that gyro calibration if you want to, um, uh, no problem. So there we go, we're good to go. I'm going to quit that, and then I'm just going to show you one thing to double check that your device is working, is if you're going to USB game controllers in Windows, you should find an Ed Tracker 2 device listed there. This means that you're recognising it as a, a virtual joystick and if you click properties you should see some axes and by moving the device you should see that cross moving. Yeah, left, right, up, down and then by tilting the device you should also get the Z axis to move as well. Um, if you're getting that and they're not bouncing all over the place and they're just reacting to movement then the device is working, you're good to go. Anything else? Um, is an issue with your game setup, your game configuration, and and while well, I don't mean to kind of absolve ourselves of any issues, you know, we can't sit and support people about their game configuration. So if it's working in the USB game controllers, it's doing what it should do. If you're finding it's not working properly in game, um, it's probably how you've got it mapped to the axes or something like that. Um, so uh, so yeah, we'll do our best to help you with that, but um, but but no promises. Okay, there we go. Um, if you're upgrading from a previous version, you can use that UI, you can just flash the new uh, main sketch in, you don't go, need to go and recalibrate, um, and, uh, and that's about it. So that's, uh, that's version 2.20, uh, watch this space, I'm sure there'll be further developments over time, but, but for now that should uh, get you going. Have fun, see you in a bit.